The National Convention of the NAACP is in Philadelphia for the 106th uh, convention. Joining us right now is NAACP President and CEO Cornell Brooks. Mr. Brooks, thank you very much for being with us here on 900 AM WURD, and thank you for bringing the convention to Philadelphia. Uh, it is absolutely wonderful to be here. Um, I am a big fan of African American radio, and we understand all too well that within our community and within the context of civil rights advocacy, African American radio is central. Uh, it is a uh, primary means of reaching the people that we need to reach. So well, you have been you have been in your position for about a year now, uh, working in Jersey, uh, out in the Newark, uh, New Jersey area. How has the past year been? There's been a heck of a lot of things that you've had to deal with as a CEO. Well, it's been an extraordinary year. I, um, I worked in New Jersey up until about a year ago, then moved to our national headquarters in Baltimore. Um, but it, it has been an extraordinary uh, year. And so when I came to this job, the announcement was on the 60th anniversary of the Brown versus Board of Education decision. When I took office uh, a little over a year ago, uh, Michael, I should say, excuse me, Eric Garner was uh, killed the second week on the job. Michael Brown a few weeks uh, thereafter, Tamir Rice a few weeks thereafter. Uh, the challenges of, of Ferguson, Charleston, uh, North Charleston, uh, Staten Island, all of the civil rights crises that we have seen over the course of the last year have convinced me and brought me to the moral conclusion that we are in the midst of what should be, what could be, if we will, uh, a movement, uh, a new civil rights movement. And it is not a civil rights movement of them, uh, them being uh, young people, but it is a civil rights movement of every generation. Why? Because, uh, as I like to remind people, T Tamir Rice was 12 years old, Michael Brown was 18, Walter Scott was 50, Eric Garner was 50. Uh, these challenges uh, cover a range of, of, of ages, and uh, a range of issues from voting rights to criminal justice reform to educational equity reform. So the NAACP is in the fight of its life, uh, and we come to the fight understanding that we were built to do this. When you leave this convention, you're going to have sessions, you're going to have workshops, but when we are all done after July 15th, what's going to be the marching orders of the NAACP looking past? You've had the Confederate flag issue in South Carolina that you've been successful. You've been fighting for that for 15 years. It finally mm -hmm. happened. But when the convention's all said and done, what's going to happen to the NAACP moving forward? Sure. So uh, we will spend uh, a week listening to President uh, William Jefferson Clinton, uh, President Barack Obama, Attorney General Loretta Lynch, uh, members of Congress, uh, leaders and uh, scholars from across the country. Uh, we come out of this convention talking about not what we think should be done, but what we're endeavoring to bring about. And so uh, we're looking to launch, uh, in only a few weeks after this convention, a historic march from Selma, Alabama to Washington, D.C., a span of 860 miles across five states, three purple states, two red states, one blue District of Columbia, uh, we are marching in what we call uh, America's Journey for Justice, Focus on our lives, our votes, our jobs, and our schools matter. We're focusing on our lives, that is to say bringing about profound criminal justice reform, passing the End Racial Profiling Act, bringing about civilian review boards at the state and municipal level, changing, a, changing fundamentally the modality and model of policing in this country so that communities are uh, uh, not objects of suspicion, but rather uh, subjects of protection. Uh, two, fixing a badly broken voting rights act. We have people, our people, right now, uh, 50 years after the Voting Rights Act, being disenfranchised from one end of the country to the other. So we are supporting legislation to fix the Voting Rights Act. Uh, we are supporting moving up uh, not just the minimum wage, but creating a living wage in the context of a living economy. We cannot have a nation of part-time workers or people working full-time on part-time pay. Uh, beyond that, uh, investing in our schools in terms of not just quality instruction, but equality commitment in terms of investment. So in terms of a full-throated legislative reform agenda, America's Journey for Justice does that. 
What we're endeavoring to do here, think about it, it's 40 days, 40 nights of teachings online and in person, educating the country as to what our issues are, going through community after community from the Deep South, landing in Washington with an advocacy campaign. And so the, the point being here is that the NAACP understands this is a moment where you have to put boots on the ground and laws on the book. And frankly, um, we have to inspire the country. Uh, we, can, we cannot blink this moment. Uh, if we think that what you see on your mobile device, what you hear on the radio, what you watch on television is a spectator a civic sport, we have missed the moment. Now is the time. This is the moment. I just want to ask you two other questions, and I know that your time is valuable, and, and you're being pulled in a whole bunch of different directions. Hope you get a chance to see some of the city while you're yes. here. Um, let's ask you about the Confederate flag. Yes. It has just come down in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. The NAACP has been working on that for about 15 years. Yes. You had a boycott of South Carolina. Uh, your reaction to the flag coming down, and will the NAACP board of directors at this meeting rescind the boycott of South Carolina? Well, I want to emphasize here that, uh, yes, we maintained that economic boycott for 15 years. So we had a boycott uh, for 15 years into the past. We had a tragedy, nine students of scripture assassinated in the church. And we had the prospect of a larger boycott, pressure the governor, the legislature, to do that which conscience called upon them to do, which was to bring the flag down. So this is a victory. Uh, we are a grassroots organization. I fully expect uh, that a resolution will be introduced to bring the boycott to an end. Uh, we would not be surprised, uh, given that there are uh, emblems of the Confederacy uh, in other states, that there won't be uh, NAACP state conferences and branches on the move mobilizing to bring those uh, emblems of the Confederacy uh, to, uh, into a museum. Um, I can see that happening. I want to emphasize here, though, that the NAACP is not content to simply remove the symbols of bias. Uh, we have to establish the presence of racial progress. And we do that, uh, as we've long done it, by substantive reform, pushing for legislation at the state, federal, and municipal level, bringing about a reform in the way things are done in terms of policing in this country, uh, promoting economic development, uh, as well as better health care outcomes. So the point being here is we are an organization dedicated to achieving real results. So uh, while we uh, are good at hashtag activism, while we're good at, at, at tweeting, while we're good at um, a, a, a mobilizing people via uh, social media, what we do that I think is quite distinctive is that we move people and we move the needle. You're boots on the ground. We're boots on the ground. And what I like to remind people is think about this. In Ferguson, Missouri, amidst all of those marches and demonstrations, and we led many of them, and we marched across that state 134 miles. We pushed for and passed a law which empowered the Department of Justice to hold the Ferguson Police Department accountable. That's the kind of organization we are. And so I understand that, for example, here in Philadelphia, uh, this is a city that's not unfamiliar with, uh, with uh, challenges with respect to policing. But I emphasize what makes a difference is a reform in policing practice. And what makes a difference is a reform in, uh, in rules, regulation, laws. And what makes a difference is where you have an organization on the ground in conversation. When the mayor has the president of the NAACP on speed dial uh, in uh, his cell phone, uh, that tells you something. Uh, when you can, when there's a civil rights crisis, if there was one in this city, guarantee you, nobody's going to go to Twitter and call up uh, an anonymous group of hundreds of thousands of people. They're going to call the local NAACP because they want people to put boots on the ground and be responsible. Speaking of the local NAACP, and this is our final question, uh, as you know, the local NAACP in Philadelphia has gone through turmoil in the last year. Uh, former President Jerry Mondesire was ousted. Uh, he was replaced by Minister Rodney Muhammad. Um, is there still a concern or a rift between the national and the local and the state. We had heard 
that a lot of the planning for this convention was taken out of the hands of the local and led by the state um, NAACP. Clarify that for us. What is the status of the relationship between the local NAACP in Philadelphia and the national? We have to be clear here. The local branch of the NAACP, of which there are 2,000 or so, that's the heart and soul of the NAACP. The bulk of the work that's done in this country for civil rights, for the affirmation of our moral and constitutional values, happens at the local level by volunteers. So there is no riff. We are committed to this branch. We're committed to working with uh, Mr. Muhammad in his endeavors. He uh, sat on the stage with me only a few moments ago. Uh, we are in his hometown, your hometown, the hometown of this radio station, Philadelphia, and I might add, also the hometown of my church, the African Methodist Episcopal Church. So uh, in terms of anybody being uh, wondering, is there a riff? No riff. We stand in solidarity with our branches because at the end of the day, there's no national headquarters. There's no national NAACP without the local NAACP. But Mr. Mondesire is no longer the president or he's no longer on the national board of directors? No, he is not. Any last comments that you'd like to make to the African-American community, to people who will be viewing this during the convention and post-convention? There's a lot of things going on. If people are curious, you can go to the NAACP's website, www.naacp.org for all kinds of information. Any last things you'd like to yeah. say to our viewers or listeners? I would simply say this. This NAACP convention, our 106th convention, is designed for you. We are in the hometown of American Liberty, Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. There are free events. So for example, anyone looking for a job, please come out to our job, job fair. We brought some of America's leading uh, employers to this city. Uh, if you love to read, we have an author's pavilion which is free. We have a commerce and industry expo. Uh, that too is free. Uh, we encourage parents and grandparents uh, and young people who are interested in uh, seeing our AXO program. Uh, AXO is like a uh, America's Got Talent meets uh, the Westinghouse Science Fair. The most brilliant, uh, wonderful young people from all across the country. That award program, awards program is free. And so the point being here is if you know of a young person who wants uh, to see young people sing, see young people write poetry, or listen and read poetry, or hear them talk about uh, uh, neuroscience, engineering, business plans, come to the NAACP. And uh, if you'd like to purchase a day pass, uh, we have those for $20, $25 for young people, $40 for adults. This is a convention that's designed for everyone to participate. We expect record attendance. Um, we have, in terms of online registration, um, we are uh, bursting at the seams uh, with young people. You know, people talk about the NAACP and our age. Well, here, here's, the, here's the reality. We are busting at the seams with young leaders, young entrepreneurs, young students who want to be a part of the NAACP. To tell you, ladies and gentlemen, how extensive this convention is going to be, ten and a half million dollars in economic development, at least 5,000 folks are coming in. I'm told that it's about 11,000 room nights, which means that the average person is going to stay about two days. Mm -hmm. Some will stay five. This is definitely the largest multicultural convention in Philadelphia this year and one of the top ten conventions in the city of Philadelphia this year. NAACP President and CEO Cornell Brooks, thank you very much for being with us on 900 AM WURD. We thank appreciate you. it very, very much. Again, 900 AM WURD will have extensive coverage of the NAACP convention here in Philadelphia online, on air, and on our social media. Reporting from the Pennsylvania Convention Center, I'm Vincent Thompson for 900 AM WURD.